Hello, my friends. This is David C. Drake, the Golden Drake, and today we are playing some more of the Elder Scrolls I Arena, the game that launched the entire Elder Scrolls franchise. And we have here our High Elven Mage, Eärendil, who is still exploring and looting the Imperial Dungeon. Hopefully we can finish with that exploration today. That should be no problem. Now, last time, while resting, we were interrupted by some kind of uh, female human um, assailant. I think it was a rogue or something like that. And uh, she managed to kill our character. So I think we should wait until we're somewhere safer before we attempt resting again. Okay, I think we've gotten everything here, but I just want to double check because some parts of that map looked a little bit, you know, in places like this where it looks, it's mostly revealed, but it still looks a little bit faint. That means you were close to this area, but didn't get right up against the walls. You know, <laughs> there, there could be things that were missed. So I try to be careful about that. In fact, I might go ahead and explore that room just in case. Now, of course, if you play this game, you don't need to be quite so thorough with this initial dungeon if you don't want to. You can just try to find the exit as soon as you can and uh, get out of here. But, um, you know, if you want to be able to buy any significant equipment after leaving here, it is kind of a good idea to do at least some looting but how thorough you are, that's up to you. I wonder how many of you watching have actually played this game, or if you're just curious about it. And how many of the Elder Scrolls games in general have you played? What are your favorites? How would you rank them? I think that's uh, not necessarily a super important question, but, you know, it's one of those things a lot of people like to uh, think about and talk about now and then. Um, it should not lead to heated arguments at all. I mean, rankings are not that important. I mean, like for me, I love the entire Elder Scrolls series. I do think, well, I mean, I. There are some that I prefer over others, which is, of course, the whole point of ranking, but that, that does not mean, for example, if there's a game that you rank lowest, that does not necessarily mean that you're saying that's a bad game. It's just a, a subjective judgment of ranking one above another, but they could still all be great games. So for me, on that note, I would tend to say Morrowind is my number one, then Daggerfall, and I'll admit, that's it's a little bit tough, like already with number two, that's a little bit tough making that judgment call. And for number three, I think I would go with Skyrim. I do think it's a great game. And this game, Arena, I would go with number four, and Oblivion, number five. Now Oblivion is still a great game, you know, I do very much like Oblivion. Sometimes I'm even willing to say I love it. <laughs> I mean, I guess you are noticing some hesitancy here in terms of my praise of Oblivion. Um, oh, good, we're actually managing to rest here. That's great. Beautiful, let's save again. Anyway. So yeah, I don't have quite as many fond feelings for Oblivion as I do for the other Elder Scrolls games. 
but I do have some, and I, I did put a lot of time into Oblivion. You know, it was a game that I loved. So I would never say it's a bad game. Not even close. It's just not my personal favorite Elder Scrolls game. But if it's your favorite Elder Scrolls game, that is great. That is wonderful. You know, I think we all deserve to have our individual opinions respected. And, uh, you know, nobody should get up in arms about anybody else's opinions. You know, I absolutely love this game, but uh, again, I ranked this one somewhat low as well. I ranked it number four. Um, oh yeah, this is where I dropped off this stuff. Silly me. Okay, so I've kind of gone around in a circle at this point. Anyway, yeah, I, I you know, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't be very tempted to to ever call this my favorite Elder Scrolls game, but it is one of my favorite games in general. And same with Oblivion, it's one of my favorite games in general. It's just that the Elder Scrolls series is so great that uh, even the ones that aren't my absolute favorites. Oh, ahead you can see the shimmering field of the ship gate. Now we don't want to exit quite yet. So we can just go ahead and mark this if we want to. I mean, it's already marked by a different color of green, but we'll call that the gate just for fun. Anyway, to finish my previous thought, like I said, you know, even Elder Scrolls games that are not my absolute favorite in the series itself are still favorite games of mine in my overall ranking of games. And the same would go for every every major game in the Fallout series. They're all great. They all just have different pros and cons, and we're all going to have different subjective impressions from those games. Each game that we play, it's going to mean something different to us than it might mean to someone else. And that's totally fine. Totally legit, you know. How you feel about a game has a little bit to do with its graphics, its music, its sound effects, its mechanics, its overall game design, quest design, level design, whatever is relevant to the game. It has, of course, it, it could have a lot to do with those things, but it will always also have a lot to do with what were you going through in your life when you first encountered that game? Uh, how old were you? Um, what what did that game mean to you at that time, and what has it meant to you since? I mean, these are things that can be very, very subjective, and these are just some examples of things that could have a huge impact on how you feel about a game. So, okay, I'm going to be a little bit completionist. I'm going to go ahead, go back to the central area, and then we will finally move on. But anyway, you know, I, I know I've been rambling quite a bit, but uh, I would love to hear from you what your opinions and thoughts are on things like this. You know, uh, do you ever try to rank what some of your favorite games are overall or in specific series or specific genres? You know, do you care about that at all? Or do you think that's not really productive <laughs> as an exercise? And... Um, You know, I'd be curious to hear, do you agree with any of the various opinions I've been sharing? Or do you disagree with some of them? You know, please let me know. I, I would love to have real conversations with every one of you, you know. But obviously, I am not <laughs> interested in unpleasant conversations with anyone on the internet. That's just... Not my thing, no thank you, but pleasant conversations, always welcome. And even if those pleasant conversations include uh, strong disagreements, quote unquote, that is not a problem. It can still be pleasant, it can be respectful, all that good stuff. Anyway, 
Okay. Well. Okay, there's a tiny chance that there could be some stuff that I've missed, but not much. I might, I might go check out that one room up there. Up here to the left. Here we go. Aha! Uh -huh. Sure enough. Bag of 15 gold pieces. Only 15 gold, but at this point in the game, that could mean a lot. Six more gold and a wakizashi. A wakizashi is a short sword. Basically, it's a short katana. There are also tontos in this game, as there are in several of the Elder Scrolls games. I think at least Arena, Daggerfall, and Morrowind. I don't remember if they had tontos in Oblivion. I don't think they had Tontos in Skyrim. I might be wrong about that. Maybe they do. Um, tontos are basically like uh, Japanese-style daggers. Now, my character can use daggers, but I'm not sure if that means I can also use Tontos or not. We'll find out eventually. I'm going to glance at what I'm carrying so far. Let's see. I can carry up to 80 kilograms with my low strength of 40. Now it seems like I'm not able to see how, you know, the total weight of everything I'm carrying. That's a little bit disappointing, but uh, no big deal. So we do have two enchanted plate helms, an enchanted longsword, and these magic items down here. Not bad, not bad. And this torque giving us a minus four to armor rating, that is wonderful. That is really helping a lot. I'm glad we found that. Because as a character who cannot wear any armor and can only use bucklers as far as shields go, that's going to really come in handy. Anyway, I think I'm done exploring, so yeah, I think we are ready to finally get out of these Imperial Dungeons and move on with our adventuring life. I mean, there's a tiny chance there might be some more loot there. Nah, I'm done. We can move on. Okay, yeah. Go left and then right. On we go. So yeah. Ahead you can see the shimmering field of the shift gate provided by Rhea Silmane. I think we are indeed ready. To move on. So are you all ready for this? It's, uh, well, <laughs> I shouldn't be building it up so much. Uh, it's actually, you know, there aren't any special effects here really. This will just transport us to somewhere in our home province of Somerset Isle. And uh, from there, as is typical for all Elder Scrolls games, that once you're out of the sort of starting area, you are radically free to go wherever you want and do whatever you want. So, here we go. One thing I forgot to do. I, I should have saved before we went in there. Anyway, we'll go ahead and save now. It is nighttime. We are in Somerset Isle, in the town of Rosefield. Now, oh, I was about to say, towns are perilous at night. 
that is now quite obvious. <laughs> there can be goblins and other enemies of all sorts roaming around towns and cities at night trying to take advantage of vulnerable humans, elves, etc. So here's our local map of Rosefield. Basically, since it's night, we cannot yet take advantage of any equipment shops or the Mages Guild or any other buildings that might happen to be here, except for the inns. What we, what you typically want to do if you're in a town or city at night is just find an inn to uh, sleep in till morning. There are a small number of NPCs who are still out at night, such as this juggler. So I'm going to save again, just in case, because, yes, I know, it's kind of a joke that Bethesda games can be buggy. Really, it's all games. All games can be buggy, okay? And uh, this game is no exception. I've had the game in... It's very rare, but I have had the game actually crash in the middle of dialogue before, so... I'm always a little bit paranoid about that ever since that experience. Anyway, here we go. Who are you? Hello, I'm Horny. Whoops, I mean I'm Randy. No, seriously, I'm Kordadolf Highbinder. You can see how I get it confused. What can I do for you, my sweet High Elf? By the way, how can you tell if a High Elf is lying? His lips are moving. Okay, that's rather obnoxious. Look, can you just tell me where the nearest inn is? That's a bit southeast of here, I'm sure of it. Okay. Any interesting rumors? Nothing I can say. Rosefield's been pretty quiet, actually. Okay, well, thank you. Though I won't thank you for that joke. Goodbye. If we were really close to an inn, he would have gone ahead and marked it on our map. Oh my. Oh, we have a poor beggar over here. We can ask him as well. Hello there. Who are you? Ah, Sonar Stormwatch thinks it's a good high elf to come talk to him. What can Sonar Stormwatch do for him? Well, I was hoping to find the nearest inn. Why don't I just inscribe the exact location on your map? Sonar Stormwatch says, pulling out a feather pen. Okay. Any interesting rumors? This year's harvest looks like the best ever. Okay, thank you. Bless you, kind sir. <laughs> Unfortunately, in this game, you do not have the option to give alms to the poor. So I cannot offer him a coin. And cannot get any blessing from doing so either. You can donate at temples and get blessings for doing so. Although, those blessings aren't necessarily so great, but that's a story for another time. Um, oh yeah, so he went ahead and marked the Laughing Sword here on our map. Very kind beggar. And happened to have a feather pen at hand. That's uh, rather special. And here we have a snake charmer. Hi there. It's been so long since I played this game, so I'm kind of in the mood to talk to all these random NPCs. Who are you? I do not believe we met, High Elf. I am Sauron Spelllock, and this is Demusuna, my snake. Any rumors you've heard? My prophet says Somerset Isle is doomed to sink beneath the sea. He did not specify when, but it sounded like soon. <laughs> You'll get interesting rumors like this now and then. Now, don't get your hopes up too much. If you're hoping that things like this might actually happen in the game, well, I mean, obviously something this dramatic would not happen, or at least you would not expect it to happen. Um, but no, typically these rumors are here just for flavor, and again to add to the realism, because it's very realistic that there are going to be all kinds of strange rumors and theories and whatnot floating around in the culture of any area you visit, and um, so you're going to hear some of that, even though it might not have any basis on reality. 
you know, it might not <laughs> it might not have anything to do with anything that you'll ever encounter in the game. Nonetheless, it's it's just it's fun. Anywho, let's put away our weapon. What time is it? We can check our status here. For me, with the default uh, controls, I press the S key to check my status. You are in Rosefield. It is 8.01 in the evening. The date is Fredus, 4th of Hearthfire, in the year 3rd Era, 389. You are, <laughs> you are currently carrying 52 kilograms out of 80 kg. Okay, so that's where it shows you how much you're carrying. You are healthy. Well, great. I'm not diseased. That's wonderful. And a bit surprising, considering where I just spent the last few hours. The warm smells of tobacco smoke and simple foods draw you into the laughing sword from the cold autumn night. So here we have it. Our first inn in this playthrough. Now... The, uh... The general townsfolk that you meet in taverns, they tend not to be very friendly, and I don't think that changes as you progress in the game, if memory serves. Although I've never given this game a full playthrough, I've only gotten maybe a quarter of the way through, maybe halfway through, I don't remember how far I got before. But uh, we'll see if my changing reputation makes any difference eventually. Let's see as this guy says here. <laughs> The bartender will be more than happy to help you. Just move along now. You know, they're they're not really in the mood for conversation. Hi, lady. You might find this hard to believe, but I don't want to be your friend. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. There's a pot of something boiling over there. Who do we have here? Drinking in the late evening. Be gone, a high elf. I don't wish to converse with you. Fine, be that way. Ah, we have a musician. Who are you? I'll give you three guesses. Give up? I'm a ludist. Name of Solomon Addis. Perhaps you've heard of me. Any rumors? Nothing much is going on, as far as I know. Heard of any interesting work to be done in this area? Ask around, I'm sure someone's heard about some kind of work. Very well. Well, here is the actual innkeeper. The innkeeper always looks like this guy. And, by the way, in most buildings of this sort, except for the Mages Guild, I think that's the only exception, you cannot save. See, it will tell me here, you cannot save in a tavern, store, or temple. So, anyway. You are about to go to the bar when a very influential woman called Old, Gan Old Ganman calls you to a table. This sort of thing will happen occasionally. This is where many of the side quests come from. Some of the side quests are extremely minor. Others, very significant. Some can lead to special artifacts. So. Uh, I don't think this will be one of those. I think this will just be a very minor side quest, but let's see what they have to say. You have a kindly face, High Elf, and I need a friend. You see, I loaned a broken sword of sentimental value to someone in the Emperor's provisions, and now I find I must have it back. Would you get it for me? I'd be happy to give you 68 gold for its safe return, but I must have the broken sword by Lordus, fifth of Hearthfire. Do we have a deal? Oh, sure. Since it's so early in the game, I could use a little extra gold. Yes. By the highest one, the good spirits must have delivered you indeed. I am relying on you, Erendil. Do not let me down. Okay, now we're finally talking to the actual innkeeper. We could buy a drink if we wanted. After that long stint in the uh, Imperial Dungeons, I think our character could use a bit of wine. And... will say that he's in the mood for some white wine tonight, so you finish the white wine, thankful for a safe haven. Okay. I found out you can actually get drunk by drinking uh, multiple alcoholic beverages in this game, and it will raise some stats while lowering others, and it lasts for some period of time. Very amusing, in my opinion, but I usually don't bother with that, unless it's for roleplay purposes, but this character is not a drunkard. This character is not interested in that, and... 
I read that you can even drink yourself to death if you're not careful. Anyway, we are not going to attempt to sneak into a room. That's not the type of character we have. We're going to get a room, but we might, you know, chat a little bit. Ask about recent rumors in this area. Have you heard about the After Dark Society? Those non-human heathen they meet every night in... They meet every night in front of the Conclave of Baal. Well, okay. Again, I don't think this is actually something interesting that you can interact with. It's just here for flavor. Um, sorry, I wish I could help you. So he hasn't heard about any interesting work for us, although we did just barely get a side quest from someone else. So Let's go ahead and get a single room. I think the different room types, you know, if you if you pay for a, a better room, I think it improves how quickly you heal. For all I know, it could have some other slight differences, uh, but I'm not sure. I, I think the main thing is just that it, it allows you to recover more quickly. One day, please. You're not going to find a better deal. You can have the single for 10 gold. Well, we're going to haggle counter asking for eight pieces nine gold pieces instead got too many bills to pay eh? well sorry I, I don't think I can pay more than eight you've got yourself a bargain price for the single kid I just cleaned it last month deal Wow well you make it sound so great fine so we'll go ahead and rest here until fully healed six hours passed so it's still 2.24 in the morning, so let's go ahead and rest some more. Four more hours. After a full night's sleep, we awaken refreshed. And let's check our local map. All right. Hello there. I'm not as think as you drink I am. Maybe it's time for a nap. Yeah, I would say so. It seems like you've been up all night. Thank you, innkeeper. Perhaps I'll see you next time. Hello again. There's the music I was looking forward to. I love all the music in this game. But this town or city music, it, it's very pleasant. They also have different music for rainy days and snowy days that is fantastic as well. Now let's go ahead, save again, and think about what we want to do. I can press L to check my logbook. I have agreed to get a broken sword from the Emperor's provisions and bring it back to the Laughing Sword by Lord of the Hearthfire. I mean, it's already Lord of the Hearthfire, so I think what that means is just as long as we do this before midnight tonight, we're good. So, the name of that store again was the Emperor's Provisions. So let's find out where that store is. Perhaps we'll chat with this lady here. Hi there. Ah, we see, now we're starting to see NPCs who are fellow High Elves with golden skin. Who are you? I am called the Lithahais, the village nomad. You know, I mostly travel around doing odd jobs. Heard any rumors? There's probably something going on elsewhere in Somerset, but not here in Rosefield. Where is... A specific equipment store, the Emperor's Provisions. I love this about this game, how you can you can ask about where the nearest store is, or you can ask for a specific store. And I love, mainly the thing I love about all this is the, the fact that the towns and cities are so realistically large in this game, that there's often several different stores, several different kins. I mean, this is relatively small towns. So there's only four stores, but still, that's four. You know, that, that's more than in some towns in uh, more recent RPGs where they tend to keep things a little bit smaller. 
That's easy, it's southwest of here. Okay. So southwest we go. And I think I recognize this building type. I believe this is an equipment store. Hi there. Sure enough, the Emperor's Provisions. As you enter the Emperor's Provisions, golden glints from the fall sun reflect off of the many items of interest scattered about. And here's the blacksmith. Ganmen sent you for the broken sword? Damn, I... I could have used it. Well, hurry back to him. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, let's see what they have for sale here. It will only show items you can actually use. So we're seeing staffs and daggers. Okay. Dagger of Endurance. That wouldn't be too bad. But uh, I'm not too interested in any of these. I would very much like to get a silver dagger. Preferably an enchanted silver dagger. Silver daggers do extra damage to certain enemies. Um, but then there are also some higher level enemies that can only be damaged with Mithril or above. Like Mithril, Adamantium, or Ebony weapons. But it'll be a while, probably a long while, before I come across any of those. Anyway, we should also check armor. Well, I could get a buckler. Might as well hold out until I can find an enchanted one for now. But maybe I should go ahead and sell some things. Let's sell these enchanted plate helms. I don't need to identify any of these. If I wanted to identify them, I could pay for that service at the local Mages Guild. I believe every city in town has a Mages Guild, only one. But, uh, you know, that's an expensive service and it's only really worth it when it really matters to you, obviously. And plate helms, I do not care about. So we'll just go ahead and sell it. Somehow they miraculously know how much it's worth, even though it's not identified. It'll give me 622, huh? It is interesting in this game how you can do this haggling stuff. That, that continued in Daggerfall and Morrowind. I think it dropped off with Oblivion. Um, kind of understandable not to include this in your game, because some people might consider it just kind of almost an annoyance, like, oh, I have to spend a little time doing all this countering, rejecting, accepting. But uh, it, in a way, it, it kind of adds to the roleplay. It's kind of fun. And, uh, you know, I just don't get too obsessive about it, you know, because you really could. You, could. you could sit and try to figure out exactly the maximum amount of gold you could get for every item, but that really would take way too much time. That would be annoying. So I'm going to say, I don't know, give me 650. I like your style, kid. I'll take that plate helm from you for, let's say, 636. You know what? Now I'm looking for 655. For that outdated plate helm? You're lucky I'm looking at it at all. Now give me a real price. Okay, fine, fine, fine. We'll go back to 650. Your mother wouldn't pay that much, kid. How about 643 gold? I'll just accept that. Because eventually, if you keep going on and on, he'll get tired of you. You know, they'll get tired of you and they'll stop bargaining. And uh, then you have to start it over again. So I don't want to deal with that. Wait. You know, that wasted time. You're taking advantage of a crazy man, but you've got a deal if you still want it. Sure. This is great. We're going to have a lot of gold. We currently have 1,392. We'll sell another plate helm. Counter with 651. Counter with uh, 652. Okay, fine. 651. We'll try one more time. 6.47, eh? Alright, you've got a deal. Let's sell this longsword as well. 3.86 for an enchanted longsword. How about you give me a clean 400? How about 405? Okay, fine, 400. 400, please. 398, done. Wakizashi, only four gold. Well, for these cheap things, you can't go up too high. 
Come on, can you give me five gold? Four? Fine. Daikatana. 27 gold, eh? We go for 33. 34. Alright, 33 is the max I'll even consider. 32? Great. Steel longsword for 11. How about 15? Okay, 14. 12? Sure. And then for really cheap things, like these daggers, we're only going to get one gold. I, I don't think there's any way of getting higher than that. staff and dagger that we have, you know, hopefully we'll find some better weaponry in the near future. Thank you, sir. Let's move on. Little tip here. You actually, in in equipment stores and maybe certain other buildings, you could actually click on him to talk to him from, from really far away. And similarly, I think you can click on the door to leave from far away. No, I guess I'm wrong about that. But uh, if we didn't want to go to the trouble of going all the way up there. You know, I could actually click on him from way back here <laughs> and do my business and then be on my way. You can, if you're playing more of a thief type character, you, well, I mean, well, I should say, <laughs> the things I'm about to talk about, you could do them with any character, but of course it would mainly be things you do if you're specifically playing as a thief or rogue, etc. But you can, as any character, you can attempt to pickpocket people, you can attempt to pilfer from stores, from mages guilds, etc, etc. We have some kind of temple here. Conclave of Solitude. Interesting. Anyway, we're not going to visit the temple right now. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that there are lots of interesting thieving options. You can pickpocket or pilfer by pressing the P key or whatever key you have set for doing that. And um, and that's also for picking locks on um, chests. For now, let's go ahead and just go right back to the Laughing Sword and complete that side quest. And once I've done that, I might check out the other stores that are around. Well, hello there. Now, the fiery autumn sun disappears as you enter the laughing sword. The sounds of laughter, clinking glasses, and banging cooking pans meet your ears. You notice I just clicked on the innkeeper. That is what you do to complete these quests, which kind of makes sense because you got them in the first place while you were attempting to speak with the innkeeper, so this is how you also complete them. So whoever this mystery person is, they say, I heard you had picked up the broken sword from the Emperor's provisions, but I admit I feared you wouldn't get it back here in time. As promised, here are your 68 gold pieces. I am very grateful. Thank you, noble high elf. So, you know, it wasn't a ton of gold, but... Every little bit helps at this point, at this stage in the game. Now then. Check our map again. You can click on these buttons over here to move north, south, east, west. You can also click in the middle to return to where you're currently located. Now, locations will get uh, marked for you on the map when NPCs mark them for you or when you right click on a door 
to see, you know, to identify the name of the, the store or temple or whatever it is. Otherwise, all these buildings on the map will just pretty much look the same. No real indication whether they're a residence. And you could try to break into residences if, again, you're, you're kind of a, a thief type character. Uh, there might, in some cases, there might be um, a palace. In this case, I think these doors on the outer walls are probably just going to the outside world, but there might be a palace. This might be a palace area. Even though this isn't a large city, it might still have a small palace for the local magistrate, you know, whatever their title is. And they are also good sources of side quests. In any case, for now I'm just going to explore a little bit, see if I can find some other equipment stores, and hope I'm lucky enough to come across some items of real interest. In my experience, the items are completely randomized. There are item lists on the UESP website that claim to show what you will find for sale in specific stores in specific towns. But in my experience, those lists are not reliable. It seems to be all randomized. Kind of cool that we can see a moon there and clouds. They did a very good job with weather effects and day-night cycles. We can see the sun slowly rising. If we sat here watching for a while, we'd be able to see both the sun and the moon moving now and then. I'm assuming there are two moons, but we just can't see them both right now. So here's an inn named the Unfortunate Dragon. Aha, here we have another equipment store. In each province, the theming for different buildings is different, but while you're within a given province, like right now, we're in the Somerset Isle, all equipment stores are going to look like this. They're going to have this style, okay? And of course, regardless of what province you're in, you once you get close to the door, you'll be able to see signs like this that indicate what type of uh, building it is. So this is an equipment store. Named rare accoutrements. Let's see what they have. As you enter rare accoutrements, golden glints from the fall sun reflect off of the many items of interest scattered about. Okay. So what have you got? Hmm. Nothing enchanted, huh? Boring. Goodbye. East, and then we'll start going south after a bit. I might as well ask someone. I'm going to save again just to be safe. Hi there, who are you? My name is Kenneth Grayall, the bodyguard. I work for the owner of Rare Supply Store. Okay. Um, where is the Mage's Guild? South of here last time I checked. And where is the palace? That's easy, it's east of here. Where is... Ah. We can also ask about Fang Lair, the fabled location that was mentioned by Rhea Silmain in our last episode, in a vision that she gave us as we slept. Couriers from Hammerfell came here not yesterday speaking of the same thing. Perhaps you should travel there to find the truth. So the province of Hammerfell. That's where we might want to go. Glad we found that woman who happened to have that bit of information. And here we have another interesting looking temple. So I'll show you what the inside of temples look like. This is the Brotherhood of Charity. You know, I don't think the names matter all that much. They're just kind of for flavor. The musty smell of autumn in the outside air becomes mixed with the spicy odor of incense as you enter the Brotherhood of Charity Sanctuary. Hmm. Kind of neat designs with onks and other interesting emblems on the walls. And here we have one of the local friars or preachers or priests or whatever you might want to call them. There are some who 
who look a little bit different, but this is how most of them look. <laughs> and they always look like they really enjoy talking. So how are you doing, sir? We can... Well, we can seek a blessing by donating money. We can seek a cure if we are afflicted by poison or disease or a curse. Or we can seek healing if we're low on HP. For now, I think I'll leave one gold coin as a donation. Receive our blessings, he says, even though we, it, it, you know, uh, whether you get a blessing or not and how much of a blessing you get depends on how much money you give. And I think it's also affected by your level. Anyway, giving one gold coin probably won't do anything, but I still like to give it now and then as a matter of role playing. Erendil likes to support local temples now and then. Crimson Griffin. Conclave of Baal. This is the place where we got that interesting tidbit that supposedly nefarious figures like to hang out here at night. Well, anyway. One thing I was going to mention about temple blessings is, according to what I've read, if you get a blessing, it mainly helps increase your chance to hit enemies, but it also helps the enemies, which is a bit strange. The way I would try to explain that in my head is I would say, well, if you get a blessing, maybe some of the more evil aligned um, creatures and people, etc., uh, maybe they can sense the blessing <laughs> and it makes them more angry, more eager to fight you. I don't know. But, but yeah, it does actually benefit enemies to a certain degree as well. I'm not 100% sure if that was a bug or if that was intended behavior. But that's one of the reasons why I'm not terribly interested in getting blessings. But temples are still fun to visit again for roleplay purposes. The pleasant autumn weather has given the essential merchandise an air of joviality. You browse through cases and displays of various supplies. The font can be a little bit hard to read sometimes, huh? It's not too bad. Like, there is a mod for changing the fonts, but I, I really don't like the new fonts that that mod provides. But if you really get annoyed by the in-game fonts, the default fonts, then that mod is an option for you. Well, I think I might see the fourth equipment store over this way. No, never mind. I was mistaken. As you can imagine, you could end up spending a lot of time in towns and especially the larger cities. Whether you want to or not is completely up to you. It's completely a matter of what you enjoy in playing a game and role-playing your character. The Screaming Chasm. Wow. That's a very inviting name for an inn. Ah. Sometimes we get preachers that are hanging out outside the temples. So here is the other um, sprite the preachers that I mentioned. Hello there, good sir. Who are you? I am Calareel Aretheus of the Brotherhood of Charity, my child. How may a poor monk help you? Well, can you tell me where the Mage's Guild is? Now I might be wrong, but I'd look northeast of here. Heard any rumors? I'd ask someone else with a better ear. What about rumors of work? By the White Crystal, another homeless High Elf looking for work. Just what Rosefield needs. Well, it's not quite the way I would characterize it, but uh, good day to you. Order of the Gentle Hand.
anyway, I don't plan on spending too much time here. You know, like I said, I might see if it's convenient to check one more store. After that, I'll move on. And we did already get that tip about Hammerfell perhaps being the place where we should make further inquiries about Fang Lair. Look at this giant open plaza. I just love, I love the way that these, you know, somewhat randomized towns and villages are laid out. Uh, to me, it's just wonderful. It, again, it adds to the sense of realism. It, it's a huge size, tons of random NPCs. It feels like a place that's really lived in, more so than, than some towns and cities in more recent Elder Scrolls games, if I'm, if I'm being honest. So, you know, this is uh, one of the aspects of this game and Daggerfall that are more realistic than more recent games. So, as our computational power and so forth has increased, that does not mean that they've chosen to make everything more realistic, unfortunately. Anyway, here's hoping that this store will have some enchanted weapons of interest. You entered the Emperor's provisions from the sunny autumn day. Oh shoot, I think this is the one we already went to. Cases of weaponry are featured next to some of the more peaceful supplies and gear. So this guy did have some enchanted stuff. And the Dagger of Endurance, you know, that's, that's a little bit tempting. What I really want would be something like a Silver Dagger of Agility and a Silver Buckler of Agility. Right now, those two would be awesome. Um, agility affects so many things. Your ability to hit, your ability to dodge both weapons and spells. Uh, but getting a Dagger of Endurance, you know, that, that would be pretty good too. Maybe I'll go ahead and pick this up. Hello, my name is Suleyan Lorathor. I see you are looking to purchase a Dagger of Endurance. I'll be happy to sell you that for as little as 301 gold. It's a very specific number. Well, I am going to say I'll give you 250. I can tell a shrewd bargainer when I see one. If you would be willing to pay me 275 gold for my Dagger of Endurance, I will agree to sell it to you. 245. It seems as if we have come to a reasonable price for my services. Let's shake on a good deal. Okay, fair enough. He chose to agree to that. I will too. And now that we have that, let's go ahead and sell our boring staff. Your staff is equipped. Do you still want to sell it? Yes. Two gold. Sure. And this dagger. One gold. Great. Okay. Nothing else I want to sell. Let's get out of here. And I think there is one more equipment store, but... I don't know. Yeah, okay, it might be right over here. So hopefully this won't give me buyer's remorse <laughs> as I visit the Vintage Armaments. You enter Vintage Armaments from the sunny autumn day. Cases of weaponry are featured next to some of the more peaceful supplies and gear. What do you have? Okay, interesting dagger of Passwall. Passwall is the spell effect that lets you destroy walls. That's kind of cool, but I don't care about getting a dagger that, that provides that effect. Nor do I care that much about having one that provides shock resistance. What about bucklers? Ooh, an elven buckler. Okay, it's not enchanted, but that, that material is quite good. You know, I think it's even a step above silver. Known as the provider of fortune, you seem to be interested in an elven buckler. I'll consider selling it for 100 gold. I'd rather pay 70. Stop playing games with me. Okay, fine. What about 75? Okay, you offer 87. Oh, come on. 75. 78. Fine. Let's exit. And now, let's take a look at our equipment again. Elven Buckler will add minus two to the armor class for the region where the Buckler is located, so 
Currently we have plus four as our armor class everywhere. If we add the Elven Buckler. Now we see plus two, plus two for these areas, basically, you know, the areas around our arms. And let's equip our Dagger of Endurance as well. Actually, let's take a look at our Endurance, 60, Health Bonus per level, plus one, Heal Modifier, plus one. Dagger of Endurance will give us plus 10 to Endurance. Oops, there we go. Now we have Endurance 70, Health plus 2, Heal Mod plus 2. Excellent. Yeah, I think that was a good call. So until we find a Dagger of Agility, that will be a great one to have equipped. Alright, take care, Blacksmith. We might want to visit the Mages' Guilds. Get a couple things identified. But I'm starting to feel ready to move on. Sometimes you can guess where the Mages' Guild is just by looking for an unusual building. Like, you know, that that's kind of an unusual one, but that might just be a, you know, the, some nobleman or noblewoman's house. Um, someone here. Let's go ahead and save first. Who are you? My name is Lar L Loralia Jarwatch, the Nomad. I go wherever the spirit moves me. Okay, great. Where is the Mages Guild? East of here. Great. Let's go east. See if we can pinpoint it. We have some kind of park here. It's a temple, I believe. Let's ask someone else. Hi there, who are you? My name is Koremon Thramal, the interpreter. I speak thy language fluently. Good to know. One might expect that as a fellow high elf, but of course, no, it should be said. There could be multiple languages on Somerset Isle. That could easily be the case. In fact, that would be very realistic. So anyway, where is the Mages Guild? East, okay. All in all, I think the visuals in this game are very compelling. Of course, it might feel old-fashioned and clunky by modern standards, obviously, but um, but still, for people like myself who enjoy retro games, it's it really serves its purpose very well. It, it really helps convey that you're really in this other world. Anyway, sure enough, this odd-looking building, this must be the Mage's Guild. So here we go. You'll always see a sign like this with the mark of the eye, and usually you'll see interesting other uh, designs on the walls. You enter the Mage's Guild, a world where nature holds little power. Outside leaves are falling and plants are dying back into the ground, but in here, strange flora lives year-round competing for space next to scrolls, potions, and other mystic apparatus that crowds the guild's shelves. Very interesting. As a mage, this is the type of place I will often want to visit. Hello there, gentle wizard. How fare thee? Can you help me detect magic? Can you identify this mark for me? 97 gold? They do not haggle, so you just have to pay it or not. So, alright. Ah, so that's a mark of wizard's fire. We'll hold on to that. That sounds useful. Crystal will cost 337 to identify. Well, okay. 
It's a crystal of healing, very nice. So if there's ever a time when I'm low on spell points, having these will be extremely helpful, despite the fact that I'm a mage, you know. Um, I can cast my own spells, but having magical items is still a good idea. Now I could identify the Torque as well, but there's not much point in doing that. I already know what it does. In this game, you can create your own custom spells, and that's definitely a good idea, especially later on in the game. Uh, it's, it's a great idea when you're at higher levels to create spell effects that are that just have like a tiny effect plus a certain amount per level. Uh, that can be a very efficient and effective way of crafting powerful spells um, when you're a higher level spellcaster. But for now, I don't think I'm going to play around with that, nor will I attempt to steal anything here. Um, I'm going to see if there's anything I want to buy. Magic items they have available, Elven Torque, Elven Bracelet, Mark of Far Silence, Mithril Amulet, Mithril Torque. So. Some of these torques, bracelets, amulets. Okay, you already know about the torques. They typically just raise your armor class, or lower it, depending on your perspective. <laughs> they improve it in any case. Now, amulets and bracelets tend to be the same. And the higher the quality, the more benefit they provide. But there are also things like this. Bracelet of personality, luck, speed, agility, healing, uh, bracers of healing. So bracers are different. Bracers are another type of magic item that you use a certain number of times. But bracelets provide a constant effect. But they cost a lot. A bracelet of agility would cost me 5,500. Ooh, bracers of healing. This must be... This must have a lot of charges in it because, wow, 14,600. Or its healing effect might be, you know, a very strong healing effect. Um, anyway... For now, I don't want any of those things, but what about spells? Ah, I can learn Levitate, Stamina, Light, Heal, Orc Strength, Wander Light. That's where you shoot, uh, you know, you shoot light, shoot a little ball of light into the distance. Um, whereas this light spell is just, is, it's targeted on you, the caster, and lights up your area. Uh, invisibility. Wizard's Fire, Strength Leech. By the way, Wizard's Fire, I don't remember if it has area of effect damage. At the very least, it's a more powerful fire spell than the one I currently have. Shock, Shield. Shield is very useful to mages. It, it gives you... Well, the, the shielding it provides doesn't go away after any period of time. It only goes away when you take damage or when it takes damage for you. So it's very nice. Free action is very useful to get rid of paralyzation, but high elves are immune to paralyzation. That's one of the great benefits of choosing to be a high elf in this game. So I don't need to worry about getting paralyzed. Resist fire, resist cold, open. That's useful. Resist shock, sanctuary. Sanctuary makes it so that enemies just won't bother you for the most part. Wizard lock. You can lock doors to prevent enemies from following you. Fireball, that of course will have area of effect damage. Cure Poison, Ice Bolt, Spell Shield, that helps to avoid, you know, effects of spells. Earth Wall, I believe that creates walls. Heal Truth, a very strong healing spell. Silence, which is Curse. I think Curses decrease the target's attributes, if I'm not mistaken. Troll's Blood helps you allows you to regenerate HP over time. Ice Storm, Fire Storm, Wyvern, Sting. That might have a poison effect, I can't remember. Uh, resist Poison, Pass Wall, Force Wall. Force Wall, okay. So Pass Wall, again, is where you can destroy walls. And that can help you kind of get through dungeons faster sometimes. Force Wall has nothing to do with physical walls. It's just a very strong shield spell. Pitfalls, that's where you destroy floor tiles to create pits in the round. That can be useful sometimes. Wildfire, Spell Drain, Far Silence, Life Steal, Toxic Cloud, Wizard Rend. I believe that has multiple effects. Uh, I can't remember exactly what they are. I'll have to look that up sometimes. Shalador's Mirror, 
I believe that's a spell, Reflection spell. Lightning, Medusa's Gaze, Force Bolt. So Medusa's Gaze probably paralyzes them at a distance, I think. Force Bolt, I think, is a very strong shock spell. Anyway, are there some I want to buy right now? Well, I think so. Some of these cheaper ones I should go ahead and pick up. Light sounds good. Target caster only. Casting cost of 30. Creates a globe of light for 10 rounds per level. The light follows the caster. Each round is about 5 seconds in real world time. Okay. And as you can see here, there, there really are a lot of spells that have kind of a per level aspect to them. So spellcasters can become especially powerful in the late game. Let's go ahead and buy this spell. Now here we can haggle when it comes to buying spells, learning spells from them. 240 gold, huh? How about just a clean 200? All right, great. Now we know the light spell. Let's learn Levitate. Caster can float for five rounds, plus one round per level. Okay. 100 golds, let's say 75. Come on, 75, 75, 75. Great. Let's take a look at the potions. Restore power is what restores spell points, so that's very important for a mage. I might want to pick up some of those. Potion of Purification, I believe, has multiple effects. I think it can cure disease, poison, and heal some HP as well. Um, but yeah, I have specific potions for curing disease, curing poison, etc. Restore Power. Let's get, oh, four of those. 300 golds. Come on, let's call it 270. Nah, 268. Okay, great. Let's look at potions again. Potions of healing. That might be a good idea. Two of those. 100 golds, let's say 72, 71, okay fine, 72, 72, 75, fine. Anything else? Heal true heals a lot more than the cheaper potion of healing. Let's get a cure disease. Ocean. 100 golds. It's called 72. 72. 72. Okay, 73. Great. And I don't think we are resistant to poison. I might want to look that up, but I, I don't think we are. But regardless, well, for now, maybe I won't bother getting that at this time. We'll see if we ever have a really bad experience with poison. Potion of stamina. Mm, I don't really suspect I'll be needing that much. Let's buy some more spells. We can buy a stamina spell. Heal 1 to 15 points of fatigue, plus 1 to 3 per level. Okay. 120 goals, huh? How about 90? 90. Come on, 90. 93, fine. Now we already know the heal spell. Orc strength might be interesting to be a little more formidable in hand to hand combat. Wanderlight can be useful sometimes. Ooh, so can invisibility. 
let's get Ooh, open spell. Yeah, okay. So I definitely want an open spell. 20% chance of magically opening a locked door or chest. Chance increases by 2% per level. 600 gold, you say? What about 500? What about 490? What about 485? Okay, come on, let's get closer to 485. Yes. There are a number of spells here that are kind of tempting. Invisibility is definitely tempting, but I think shield is the next one I should get. 15 hit point shield created, plus 5 points per level. We're currently a level 4, as we see there. 500 gold, you say. How about 400? 395. 390. Great. So now we only have 147 gold left. So, I think we're done buying things for now. Thank you, fellow wizard. Take care. I find it kind of entertaining, in a way, that uh, the mages here in the mages' guilds, that they look kind of like, um, almost like stereotypical wizards, you know, with their pointy hats, long white beards, and robes festooned with stars and moons and other such symbols, and wielding this magic staff. Anyway, they're pretty cool looking, and I like what they do with the decor of these mages' guilds, you know, all these shelves with not only potions and books, but skulls and other odds and ends. All right, off we go. And I think we might be just about done with today's play session. One parting comment I would like to make is that despite the fact that we got that tip about, oops, here we go. Come on, why is my, why is my world map not opening? There we go. So despite the fact that we did get a tip about Hammerfell being the place where we might get more information about Fang Lair, our character is very knowledgeable about rumors related to powerful artifacts and so forth, and he knows that there's a possibility of finding a powerful artifact of interest in the province of Skyrim, and that artifact is the Ogma Infinium. I'm really hoping to get that as early as possible in this game so that I can boost a whole bunch of my stats. Um, so we might travel to Skyrim in the near future to uh, see if we can catch some rumors about that item. Now there are a few different special artifacts that are possible to get rumors about in each province and it, it is randomized of course, you can't guarantee which item you might get rumors about as you explore, but if you keep asking again and again in multiple places you'll eventually be able to get a quest for any special artifact that interests you. And you can check the UESP website again to get information about these different artifacts. Um, I don't mind taking advantage of my special knowledge about these aspects of the game because in this case I feel like my character could also have access to special knowledge about some of these things. So, um, you know, they're a very knowledgeable scholar and mage, so and regardless, they could have access to rumors no matter who they are. Anyhow, I think... Um, I think I'm just about done for today. But maybe, now that we're already talking about that, maybe I will go ahead and conclude today's episode by first traveling to somewhere in Skyrim. So where should we go? You will notice if we poke around that there are many places with familiar names. Solitude, Markarth's side, 
Carthweston Hall. Falkreath. Riverwood. White Run. Rifton. Windhelm. Dawnstar and Winterhold. Now, this province shares a border with Hammerfell anyhow, so our character feels that it might be worthwhile to investigate rumors they've heard about the Ogma Infinium possibly being located in Skyrim at this time. And once we've looked into that a little bit, then we can move on to Hammerfell, where we can look more deeply into rumors about um, Fang Lair. So, we will go ahead and travel to the large city that's closest to Hammerfell, Falkreath. The city-state of Falkreath in Skyrim Province. The date is Lordus, 5th of Hearthfire in the year 3rd era, 389. Based on the current weather, it will take 38 days to travel here. The total distance is 1,980 kilometers. You should arrive by Sundus, 13th of Frostfall in the year 3rd era, 389. And no, I'm not always going to read these things. I apologize that I'm reading so much stuff right now. It's just, it's kind of fun for me because I've, it's been a long time since I've played this game. And um, anyway, to fast travel after you selected a place such as Falkreath, you just click on this horse icon. Click on that. And you start traveling by horse, apparently. Today is the 13th of Frostfall, known throughout Tamriel as the Witches' Festival, when the forces of sorcery and religion clash. Oof, looks like we arrived on a, a day or a night that might be kind of bad luck. The Mages' Guild gets most of the business since weapons and items are evaluated for their mystic potential free of charge. Oh my goodness! And magic spells are one half their usual price. Ugh. I wish I had known I could take advantage of this. <sighs> I could go back and try to take advantage of a previous save, but nah, why bother? Demonologists, conjurers, lamias, warlocks, and thaumaturgists meet in the wilderness outside Falkreath, and the creatures created or summoned there may plague Tamriel for eons. Most wise men choose not to wander this night. So, as you can see here, there are some potential benefits for going to a city on this type of holiday but if you're there at night there will be even more enemies than usual so it can be dangerous and um, I I tend not to try to keep track of all these different holidays that they have but occasionally out of good or bad luck you might happen to visit a city or town when there's a special holiday and it might mean that you get discounts at one place or another or, or it might have some other special effect at the very least, it adds to the flavor and realism of this world, which I absolutely love. You have arrived in the city-state of Falkreath in Skyrim Province. The date is Sundus, 13th of Frostfall in the year 3rd era, 389. It took 38 days to reach your goal. The city-state of Falkreath bids you welcome, as does its people. better save our game. And draw our dagger. Oh boy. Hmm. But you know, as I indicated earlier, I think we've done enough adventuring for one day. So, uh, please do like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more, consider supporting me at patreon.com slash the drake so you can also gain access to upcoming games from Golden Drake Studios. And regardless, uh, thank you for watching, take good care of yourself, leave me a comment, and um, I'll see you next time.